Ruin My Childhood. All right. Thank you for listening to Ruin My Childhood. I am Mike. And I'm Kat. And this is the podcast where uh, we talk about old movies and see if they uh, stand the test of time. And uh, we are going to call it Audible. On our last episode, we said we were going to do Hocus Pocus. But we're going to do that one with a guest, and we kind of had to reschedule. So we're going to call it Audible, and we are going to cover the 1995 classic Casper. I don't even know what that means, call an audible. That means you make a change, last minute change. Oh. It's a common phrase. <laughs> Apparently not. It's a it's a football phrase, but it's pretty common. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Just use a football phrase at the homeschooler. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you, did you see this movie as a kid? Do you remember it? I definitely did see this movie as a kid. Um, I remember really liking it. I also remember it being like a little bit unsettling, but in a good way. Right. I I saw this movie a bunch as a kid. We actually did own it. Uh, I think my brother or one of my sisters really liked it. So we did have this. I didn't watch it like a thousand times, but I watched it several times. And I don't really remember 100% of the plot. Like I just remember loosely um, there's like a a therapist for the ghosts and that there's going to be like a big party at the haunted house because the girl wants to be popular. And that's really all I remember. I do remember that there's a Ghostbusters cameo in what? it. What? Yeah, I think I'm, I think it's Dan Aykroyd. What? Who's in it? Dan Aykroyd or the uh the nerdy guy. I know one of them is in all it. All I remember is that Christina Ricci's in this. I couldn't tell you yes. who else was in it. Christina Ricci and Bill Pullman. Who's Bill Pullman? Bill Pullman's the from Spaceballs and uh No, um, I know who while Bill you were Pullman sleeping. is. I mean who Oh, he's Christina Ricci's dad. He look what that's stupid. She looks nothing like him. You know there's other genetics involved, like the mother That's stupid. Plays a part. Does the mother have a giant head? Maybe. I don't remember. I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what else is I remember. Is the mother about a this pumpkin? Movie. Oh. oh, I mean, she's lovely, oh, but mean. she has a giant head. She does. And maybe they cast that's... her so that it would be balanced with Casper. <laughs> 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 um, I don't really remember anything else about this movie. I remember liking it. I just remember that. Oh, one of the Monty Python guys is in it, I think. Nice. I think so. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure. But other than that, like, I think we should just... just... Watch the movie, I guess. Sounds good. All right. All right. Right, so uh, we just watched Casper, and I've got a lot of things to say about this movie. <laughs> I do too. Um, just do you want to summarize it really quick? I always summarize. I'm gonna have you do it this time. Oh, I'm terrible at summarizing, which is why you always do it. But I will because I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this ungrateful little beast brat of a woman um, inherits this freaking sweet Art Nouveau house in Maine of all places, Maine, right? Um, and it's super haunted. So she needs to get rid of the ghosts. She, she brings in all these professionals. Nothing's working. And then the little ghost who lives in the house, Casper, um, sees on TV that there is a therapist for ghosts, and he's got this hot daughter. And this pervy little <laughs> ghost goes through the power lines to where this ungrateful little brat is staying in her hotel and, like, shows her the TV with this ghost whisperer and basically convinces her to hire this dude. So this dude moves his miserable daughter, um, who the TV reporter calls a loner. That's right. <laughs> Which is really brutal. Um, he moves his poor daughter, even though she's obviously unhappy being moved around the country. Uh, it's, it's, it's not been helpful to her making friends or, uh, you know, having a normal life right. and he doesn't care, you know, cause he is obsessed with finding his wife's ghosts. So this guy is like obviously totally deranged and they move across the country to this house 
and they get to work trying to um, help these ghosts pass over to the other side. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the only really thing you missed is, like, the subplot of the, the the school. So she shows up to school on the first day, and they're all making fun of her, and she mentions she lives at the haunted house. And they just volunteer her house to be, like, the place <laughs> <Right>. for the dance. <laughs> Which is totally bizarre, but I mean, like, that is a sick house. I would have been thrilled to move in there. And it has, like, a bunch of secret rooms and hidden contraptments and stuff like that. Contraptments? Contraptments, <laughs> compartments and traps. <laughs> I mean, there are traps in the compartments. Trap queen. No, it's a really awesome house. Yeah. Um, one thing that does kind of bug me about it, though, is the way they filmed it. Like, you can tell that the entire exterior of the house, except for the porch in certain scenes, is just all CG. Yeah, it was a weird looking house weird. on the outside. It was. I mean, so there, there are moments in this movie where the special effects, like the special effects with the ghosts still look pretty good. Yeah, like, totally. They still, they still hold up. And I think part of that is because they intentionally made the ghosts cartoony because yeah. Casper obviously was a Harvey Comics thing and so they're not going to completely change the way he looks and so all the other ghosts kind of have to fit in with that format but then there are moments when the special effects are really really painful <laughs> yeah um some of the things that were weird is even within the ghosts like so casper and his the three other ghosts fat so stinky and stretch mm -hmm. they all have a similar look but at this point uh or at a couple points in the movie two main characters die and become ghosts so one the villain becomes a ghost, and at one point, Bill Pullman dies and becomes a ghost, and they are able to bring him back to life, which we didn't discuss in the summary. Um, Whatever. But they looked drastically they have different. They have <laughs> they hair have clothes and clothes and, hair. and a Maybe lot more detail on the face. Maybe it's because they're fresher. Maybe. They're, but the they're less is, detached from their former selves. Maybe. But those particular ghosts, I don't think, looked as good as the other ghosts. Okay, so one thing that bugs me specifically about those two ghosts is um, part of what's like bugging Casper is like he's super lonely and um you know eventually at some point he should move on but then right. they find you know his father owned the house and his father um was an inventor and he had all these amazing machines and then Casper died um kind of like being a jerk and not listening to his dad he got sick because he didn't come in from sledding when he was told to and he died so his dad was like obsessed with trying to bring him back to life he had like this whole frankenstein thing going on and he made this machine to like you put some primordial juice mix into it and you put the ghost in it and it's supposedly, called the lazarus it's the lazarus and it brings them back to life which i mean we're not even gonna delve into how weird all that is well the physics but, don't make sense where does all the maths come from but um when they get back to that machine or where was i going with this um <laughs> so in talking to casper the girl cat realizes that he doesn't remember pretty much anything of his oh, former I know life going with this he doesn't remember anything of his former life and so part of the movie is she finds all of his old stuff and like unpacks it and you know tries to jog his memory and she like gives him back this gift of his memories which right. is like really amazing for him and you know gives him this new lease on the afterlife. Um, but then when Kerrigan dies which like actually it's pretty funny my third note on this movie was I hope Kerrigan dies. Um, <laughs> so Kerrigan dies. And she's still set on her mission of like she remembers what she's everything. doing. Yeah, she remembers everything. But then the dad dies and he remembers nothing. He doesn't even remember his daughter until they right. do like the pinky promise thing. Right. So, I don't know, do like female ghosts remember stuff better? Like that didn't really make sense because it's odd that they would have her remember everything right out the gate when it was a pretty major plot point. That Casper didn't remember his former life and they right. had to bring it back. And then and it was then another the major forget. plot point when the dad had to remember too. Well, the whole climax w wrapped itself up really quick. It was really um, quick. So basically in a nutshell. There was a lot of exposition and it was delightful exposition. Yeah. But then the end was like, whoa, what just happened? We well, have yeah, basically in a nutshell, Casper remembers everything. Like after he sees like the newspaper clippings and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, there's a pit, there's a machine that'll bring me back to life. And he brings her down. There's this whole like Rube Goldberg machine kind of thing. And then the bad guys decide to kill each other so they can become ghosts and go into the <laughs> vault. And then just magically at the same time. How do they the know time, that they're going to be ghosts? Right? Like, I don't know. 
Is well, it if you just, die they with assume the intent, it's something with the house? Well, no, they, 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 if they die with the intent of having unfinished business, they would come back. Right, because that's but, the whole premise, that ghosts are just people with, like, unfinished business. Exactly. But I mean, like, I'm pretty sure most most dead people have unfinished business. I guess. Well, so I, mean, <laughs> I guess it would be, like, if it's a deep, like, you need to get this kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, they go through, they kill each other. And then they come back, but Bill Pullman's character happens to come back and Casper sacrifices him coming back to life to save Bill Pullman. And then at the end, because he did that, Bill Pullman's wife, Kat's mom, comes back and grants him enough time to be a human. You always do that with male actors. You'll name the characters for other people, but then if it's like... Mel Gibson is in the movie. You're always going to say Mel Gibson. Well, I can't remember his name. I didn't remember his character name. (laughs) The dad. (laughs) Yeah, the dad. Um, Oh, by the way, there were both. Their names were the last name was Harvey. Harvey Comics. Get it? Yeah. Um, but he comes, he comes back. He sacrifices himself. The his wife comes back and is like, the reason I don't have unfinished business is because you guys loved me so much. That my life was complete and I was able to move right. on. So she and comes then she back gives, as an angel, so she's yeah. not all goofy looking like the rest of them. And then she gives Casper the gift of being human for like an Half hour. An hour. Yeah, he does like one <laughs> dance and comes back. That's and then so it, screwed up. And then because he like he's like dancing with Cat, and then he kisses her, and then he turns back into a ghost, and all of the students at the dance like freak out and they run away. Um, but I God, I took a it's lot like of notes. Best Halloween party ever, though. Right. Okay, took... so weird thing, though, like this whole thing is supposed to be happening leading up to Halloween, and yet the whole film kind of has Christmas music over it. Well, it was an Amblin Entertainment. Like, I didn't check to see who did the music, but like, it seems like they got... Um... It's like the generic cheeky music with yeah. a full orchestra and lots of bells. Yeah, it did have a lot of bells. <laughs> um, there were a lot of like pretty like there was a lot of adult humor in this not like a ton of sexual like there's definitely a penis joke in it there was definitely a penis joke and then there was a when couple of like, vacuum right like they get sucked into the vacuum yeah and he's like get your pointy head away from me he's like that's not my head <laughs> and then there's a like an apocalypse now reference like they come in doing like the flight of the valkyries song like the na 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 it's towards nah. the beginning of the movie when they first move in casper's stoked that there's a chick in his bed yeah they were, that too um Bro, and he follows chill. her around too like he at one point he's like, i really want to go to the dance with you and she's like you can't go to the dance and he's like he can go invisible he can like, like i mean go like i feel walls. sorry for casper because he's obviously really lonely right he's been in that house for a long time he's socially awkward like i get it but like the whole thing is just a little bit pervy so that yeah it's totally creepy and <laughs> he he sets off the whole events of this whole movie because he wants to meet her Right. So he like manipulates all the events in this movie. Like the ghosts are super <laughs> manipulative. At one point, the ghosts decide that they think um, Doctor Harvey's a good guy, so they like take him to the bar. They get him drunk, and they they're gonna kill him. Like they have shotguns, pitchforks. They're gonna kill him, and then he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna tell Kerrigan that I'm not gonna get you out of the house. It's your house. Possession's nine tenths of the law." Mm-hmm. And they decide not to, but then he gets drunk and walks out and walks off a cliff and dies um <laughs> dude okay so like the dad talks like he's drunk pretty much the entirety he of the might movie be. so i'm like wondering if he does like have a drinking problem and we just didn't get that subtext like maybe they cut that out or something well, he was super um like neurotic so at one point like i got a note where he says like you kind of mentioned it like she doesn't want to move around a lot and he says he something completely like completely disregards her well-being Right, so at one point he goes, she goes, there's no such thing as a ghost, Dad. And he, like, slams on the brakes on the freeway, pulls over, (laughs) and he goes, if you go with me one last time, if I don't find what we're looking for, we'll stay. And it's like, well, first off, you're her father. Like, you don't need to make that deal with her. Right. Um, But second, like, and the thing that doesn't make sense is he gets there, and he's living in the house that's owned by Kerrigan. Uh And a a couple points, like, there's a point where um, Kat's like, there's no reason to unpack. We're just going to be gone in a couple weeks. And he looks at her like, he's like, I thought we were going to give this a shot. And it's like, you don't live in that house. <laughs> right. That's not your house. So no matter what, you're going to be moving. He's not very good at being an adult. <laughs> no. And then. And then he like lets ghosts cook for him every day. Yeah. Well, Get what's together, weird is dude. he's a bit of a fraud. Because right. like the whole news story is like some old lady is like, yeah, he came over and my, my husband was here and. 
he came over and he just talked to him a couple times. And just a couple weeks later, my husband left. He said goodbye, right. smiling. But when he sees Casper, he freaks out. Right. And then he's like clearly traumatized for most of the movie after that because he's scared of these ghosts. Yeah. And he like he does his best like, oh, we need to do the therapy. And these three ghosts like mess with him. Like they don't respect him at all. Like there's a point where they're like. Oh, we can get your your wife. She's super nice. And like they do this thing where like they send Fatso around and he like they get this music the whole like it's all sappy and romantic and you see like steam coming out of a door and like it's lights <laughs> and then it's just him and drag. Which was <laughs> right. really like, funny. Back um, to the children's movies always have a character in drag. Right. There was a really <laughs> funny scene. like so this movie had a big budget. So for a nineteen nineties kids movie with this had a fifty million dollar budget. They had a whole bunch of cameos. Like, yeah. honestly, if they were actually paying for everyone, they go through like 10 million in about 10 seconds. So there's a point when you first see the three go like the three evil ghosts. They're not really evil, but they're like the ones that enjoy like scaring humans and they mm -hmm. possess him. All three of them possess him. So he looks in the mirror and you see uh, Clint Eastwood. And then he does uh, Rod Rodney Dangerfield and then Mel Gibson. And then he's like doing eye right. stuff in the mirror and he's like kind of liking what he's looking like. <laughs> and then he's the Crypt Keeper. So like that was expensive right there. Yeah, super expensive. But and I it, mean, I guess if you are Amblin Entertainment, then you've got friends. Yeah. Well, there's a point where. You've got um, friends who want to be owed a favor. Yeah. Like oh, totally. Keeper. I mean, like. Super I mean, Steven shallow. Spielberg did executive produce it. He was credited <laughs> as executive producer. Right. Um, and this was like at his peak. But at one point, there there was actually the one thing that they did cut for budgetary reasons. There was supposed to be a full on musical number right before <laughs> they become friends. And they cut it because it was going to cost like $3 million to animate this one scene. So they well, elected not to do it. super awkward when like the movie isn't a musical and then they just have one musical. Like who? No. But they did so have weird. a musical number at the end. Like the three ghosts played Casper, the friendly ghost theme. Eh, that's different. Um, one of the other things oh God, I took so many notes. I'm just trying to like figure out what I really want to talk about. There's a couple <laughs> points where like he's like, "Ghosts can't hurt you," and like Casper is like, "No, I, ghosts can't hurt you," but they totally can. No, I explained this to you. She I said think specifically, you're wrong. "No," she said to him, "Can you hurt me? Can I hurt you?" Because she like she wanted to touch him. Yeah, and but that's why she was asking that. She was asking, like, if I touch you, is it going to hurt either of us? And that's what it meant. I get that. But there's several points where Dr. Harvey says ghosts can't hurt you. But they totally like he well, says it several times. Dr. Harvey's a drunk. Yeah. But like these ghosts, <laughs> they're poltergeists. Oh, OK. And this is super weird. So like Casper can like willfully move through things. And yet when Kat is unpacking her suitcase in the beginning before they meet, She's He's, throwing stuff and like it's like socks get caught in his mouth and like yeah. things hit him well, involuntarily. Also, so is it only if he's like expecting them I that guess he can so. have things pass through him? I think he has to be in a, like in a particular state. Like he can willfully put himself in a, an intangible state and things will go through him. But mm -hmm. the, they did the same thing with the, the dad and the three ghosts. There's a point where they're trying to like convince him to be their friend and... They, uh, he's like, no, we got to do the therapy. And he's like, because he's super upset that they tricked him with the wife thing. And so they're like, come on, let's be friends. And he like walks right through them, even though they're trying to hand him like a picture frame or something. Right. So it is kind of like the rules on that are a little vague. Um, but these ghosts, there's a point where like they take his china and their picture frames and they're throwing it up in the air. And then they like make their, their fingers look like guns and they shoot like ghost bullets <laughs> and they're exploding things. Ghost bullets. <laughs> And they're able to pick up and throw swords they're at like one point. like shooting with all of his memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> and there's one point where Casper like blows himself up. Like he puts his like finger in his mouth and like inflates himself. And he changes colors like so he looks like a Superman ghost. And he's able to pick up Cat, drag her. He drops her Dude, well, that's from the so second story. screwed up. Okay, and like, then he I catches find... her and flies her away. I find that scene extremely problematic from the standpoint of like they kind of have this romantic thing at the end of the movie and they become friends after he straight up like terrorizes her, dragging her out yeah. of her window Stop over the ocean syndrome. by an ankle. Like this is not a healthy relationship. No. <laughs> it's like Twilight before Twilight. Pretty much. <laughs> and then let's see. There's a point I also when feel oh, like there's he's a point a where there's a sword fight. Her. 
Well, his voice is a little young. Like, he's supposed to be the same age. He's supposed to be 12, and she's supposed to be in middle school. So I think they're yeah, supposed to be the same Yeah, but she's like age. 14 in this movie. She well, looks like no. a 14-year-old. Yeah. So there's a point where, like, the three ghosts, like, the bad ghosts, I, I keep calling them bad, but they're just, like... They're, like, his uncles. Yeah. Uncle I don't think ghosts. they actually... Well, that... I'm just curious as if they're actual... It's strange. Because their names are Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky. And at one point... <laughs> cat opens a door and sees like their room and it's got they have three big beds right. with their names carved into it like one why do they have beds why do they eat right i think they just enjoy the eating thing and then but why do they need beds and surely their names were not fat so stinky and stretched <laughs> when they were alive right. well i think that's just kind of like a remnant from the comics i guess i don't know like i know there's a sequel <laughs> to this movie that was like direct to dvd was with that, it was um, Casper and Wendy. Yeah, Casper and Wendy with uh, I can't Lizzie McGuire. I can't think of her name. Uh, uh something Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff. Yeah, uh, and I think they go into their backstory. And you tell like you see like a flashback, but I don't really know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, so in the beginning of the movie, um, this is kind of like a throwaway scene, but these two kids like kind of break into the house and are looking around, and the ghosts scare them. And a, well, Casper like a, scares them. Yeah, this one's just Casper. Like, was that a Culkin? No, that wasn't a Culkin. I looked. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I looked. Okay. I didn't see any Culkins on it. But that like scene was kind of funny. Like, I wrote a note on that. So these two kids go and they like break into the house and they're arguing like, "Hey, take a picture of me." And they're like, "No, I'm not gonna take a picture because then nobody will think that I was here." And it's like, there's there's a couple simple things you can do. You can <laughs> hold the arm, do a selfie. Or one of you takes a picture of the other and then they reverse. So you both have your picture of you in the house. But then Casper's like, I'll take the picture. And then they freak <laughs> out. Um, and the opening credits are over like the Polaroid developing, which was clever. Clever. And the, dude, the beginning, we didn't even talk about the like the different people who tried to like exercise the house. I touched on it briefly. But I mean like the de- so. They get first they get like a priest guy and she's like, Have you done this before? And he's like, I've never done it, but I have some friends who have. I'll look into like I've read it. it. I've watched the videos. I've been studying it. I'm I'm pretty sure I can do a piece of cake. He goes in and then he walks out and his head is facing the wrong way. Right. And that was one of the scenes where the CG wasn't great. Um, yeah, it was so awkward. But that Didn't was weird. Like they slimed. Fl- they broke his neck. <laughs> but, but he was still alive. Yeah, but his neck is broken. It was just kind of like a curse, like a, a rubber neck curse. Right? And then I was right. Um, it was Dan Aykroyd that came in, and he walks out, and he's like, who are you going to call? Somebody else. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> that really surprised me when he walked out. I was not expecting that. Also, I think just the time frame of when this movie came out, it does not seem like this movie is that old, just because of the way it looks. Like, it still looks really good. It looks good. really good. Like, And so when I saw Devin Sawa, like when Casper becomes human again, and it's Devin Sawa, I was like, that can't be right. Because I was kind of like expecting Devin Sawa at this time to like already be SLC punk age. Like, you're a Jesus, I think that was you? like five or six years later, though, right? So weird. It's yeah. Weird. Dude, that scene where they were trying to kill each other, the the lawyer and, and Cardigan, was pretty okay. crazy. Carrigan. This Carrigan. is weird because, like, they apparently do not have this idea until they're walking down that hallway. And then Carrigan goes from zero to trying to kill him in about 10 seconds flat. Well, they start like, talking about that? it. They yeah. start talking about it, and he doesn't realize that she means, like, he's like, well, if, if he could be a ghost. And then she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like. So she goes and grabs a sword and tries to decapitate him. But they're so he puts having on a the conversation, armor. and that's when she has this idea. Yeah, so it's, it's not like she premeditated this. No, like, it's they're pretty just terrible. walking along, and then, then, then she... they mention it, and then she's like, okay, I'm just going to kill him right oh, now. So what's crazy, so she puts, he puts on a suit of armor, and then he finds like a barrel of grease. And so she, he like pours this grease down. She slips right, and flies out the window. Like chocolate. I was really confused by that because that straight up looked like chocolate. I'm like, why is he putting chocolate on I don't know what it, it could have been chocolate. I don't know. Where did this come from? Well, I mean, they have a full kitchen with, like, dozens of eggs and tons of food. Um, where do these ghosts get all these groceries? They still, Well, that's another thing. So there's a point where um, when the, Casper's making breakfast and he there goes to... There are, like, to, 30 eggs in that kitchen. Yeah. And he goes to Dr. Harvin and he goes, do you, need, you, you read the paper? Which paper do you want? And then he flies away and comes back in a little bit with the paper. He's just stealing this these things. 
<laughs> That's true. Because he can travel like through the town's electrical wires. Right. So, Weirdo. yeah, he's stealing all this stuff. And Casper is very innocent and misguided and kind of a jerk when you think about it. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't a know bit. he's being a jerk. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Dude, well, there's Casper. another scene. Casper followed her to school, too. Casper's a, a little thief. He is kind of having an abusive relationship with her. And then, he's... like, when she's in bed, he's, like, hovering over her, like, an inch from her face. Super yeah. creepy. Well, there's a point where, like, they fall asleep talking to each other. Right. And, and then he just he lingers. See... And then he, like, looks at her. He's <laughs> like, if I could go to the dance, would you take me? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, can I keep you? Can I keep you? I know. <laughs> so creepy I mean, but it's also I say that like to, i've actually say that to you pretty often that's where this is actually just where i got really this from sad because like a lot of times when they're you know friendly ghosts and it's supposed to be a light-hearted movie they don't go into like the whole like dead children thing right? and they like went there with this and so the whole movie is just a little bit unsettling yeah did you did you catch that though like i say can i keep you a lot yeah did yeah, you I catch totally that? Yeah, that. I totally got that from this. It was like this. super creepy coming from the <laughs> <laughs> um, Big old head. Uh, yeah, I mean, so like all the adults in this movie are obviously mentally unstable. Kat is the only person that like has has it together. And she's stuck being dragged around by her insane father who I guess assumes that at some point they're going to have squatters rights in this mansion. Right. Like, <laughs> how are they going to stay there? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. What happens at the end? Because like they, she died, and then the the ghost right, killed the lawyer. Dies, and she killed the lawyer as a ghost. She like punts him through a window, and he goes flying hundreds of yards. Right. So Kerrigan and the ghosts are dead, but apparently the building had been condemned, which is odd because like that it building pretty didn't. Good. Right. It looked pretty good. I don't know why it would have been condemned. They were able to get electricity going. All she had to do was change a um, change a uh, fuse. The plumbing worked. Yeah. I don't know. And Maybe this house has like, like <laughs> secret passages like this didn't, this confused me. So there's a point when Casper remembers what's going on, he puts her in this chair and the stairs turn into like there's a spiral staircase that turns into a ramp and mm -hmm. sends her to this like basement laboratory and it goes through this track and like this thing sprays with water, sprays with shaving cream, then has a bunch of like razors going up and down supposed to shave. And then at the end it has a bow tie. And it didn't make sense to me because Casper was like, yeah, my, my dad didn't really like to get ready in the morning. So presumably the dad went down this thing naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's weird. Well, the thing is, like, <laughs> how is that weird? Like he had a hard time getting the, going in the morning, the so he had like, a machine there's not to a part where it showed like a shirt or arms. Like it just was like shave, 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 and then the bow tie. Naked so, or and maybe a bow tie. he went down in a shirt, but his shirt would get soaked with it because it's just like spraying foam everywhere. Maybe it, it was old, so it was it out wasn't of calibrated correctly. <laughs> maybe I don't know. In that thing, like the actual Lazarus machine was like stored underwater and it came out and there was just a little bit of tarnish. I feel like a hundred years in water. I don't care like what kind of metal that is. It was copper. That would tarnish. That would have been like green, not copper. Yeah. Uh, but overall, like this movie, we're <laughs> well, I don't making think it was underwater. It, it was it was under um, dry ice mist because <laughs> that wasn't water. It was just a nice smoke effect. Oh. Mm. oh, okay. Now, now, granted, like I don't know where that endless supply of dry ice would come from, but eh, movie magic. Yeah. Well, one <laughs> of the things we also didn't talk about how they actually defeated Kerrigan. Really quick, like I just want to touch on that. It was actually pretty quick thinking of on Casper's part, where so she gets the treasure, and it turns out that it's just baseball cards. Like, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's sentimental we, treasure. It's just sentimental treasure. And because presumably goes, your... that that letter with the uh, the invisible ink that made her think that there was treasure in the building was supposed to be for Casper at one point. Oh, it's totally supposed to be for Casper. So, yeah, at the beginning of the movie, when like Ben Stein is in this movie, and he's like the executor right. of the will. And he's like going over it and like they give almost all her, Kerrigan's father's money to like all these different animal foundations. So she gets the house and she's like, whatever, I don't want this. So she throws the file in the fire and the lawyer's like the deed like the land's worth something and then he pulls that folder out but then there's another piece of paper he leaves in there the heat activates this hidden message so that's really what gets the plot going right um, but okay so like how was kerrigan 
presumably related to Casper because like well, someone she might had not to... necessarily be like if Casper well, was an only child end up with that house and then leave it exactly as it was I mean maybe her father was like a distant relative and he just didn't care it was a house in Maine because it was very like the last line of the well and to Kerrigan the this estate in Maine so maybe right. it was just like something that they inherited and they never did anything with or maybe it was a property that he just purchased before he passed who knows weird yeah i don't know but like overall like we're we're kind of making fun of this movie a lot but i mean this was a very much a movie of its time it was fun um, it was enjoyable i liked it just like we've talked about with some of the like the mask was a recent episode like that cg is not great but because it was so stylized and different it works. It still holds up. Same thing, like you mentioned earlier. Like these ghosts look pretty good because they made them cartoony, right? Um, but yeah, fifty million dollars on this thing, and it made like two hundred and eighty million. Like, it was a mm. hit. Nice. And I looked after watching this. I was like, it was fun. It looks pretty good. And I looked at the how much money it made. I was like, why wasn't there a sequel? And I looked into it, and there was supposed to be a sequel, but Bill Pullman went on to do. Um, uh, Independence like, Day. He blew up. Christina Ricci blew up. Plus, she probably got like a little bit too old for it. Yeah, so they were just not able to get one out quick enough. So they ended up making a cartoon, and then they made a few direct to DVD sequels. But yeah, this one like was a hit. I like it. I kind of feel like Devin Sawa was absolutely perfect to play Casper the Friendly Ghost. Sure. <laughs> the only thing that I know him from besides this. Um, I never actually saw SLC Punk, but uh, Final Destination. <laughs> <laughs> I never bothered watching those movies. The first one, the first one's really good. Actually, the second one's pretty good. After that, don't watch them. Was he in? Um, was that him in Tom and Huck with Brad Renfro? Maybe I don't know. I have no idea. I know that he did a lot of stuff. He was he was big. He was like JTT status. Yeah. Yeah. GTT and his giant. God, I'm just looking at the note. I'm laughing again at the along with his loner daughter. That was really funny. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, it was a funny. It was a very entertaining movie. It was a good family movie. Like, yeah. I wouldn't mind watching it again with some kids. Yeah, it wasn't it was so bad. Like, it was a little slow <laughs> initially, but it was funny. Like, those three ghosts were pretty funny. They were. And there was enough humor in it, like that penis joke and the uh, <laughs> the apocalypse. Now they're like the I smell. I love the smell of fleshies in the morning. Like. Um, and there's a pretty good scene where like they're yelling at Casper for sweeping the floor and she's like, why are you being so mean? Like he's just cleaning the floor and we're like this and they're like, you flesh bag. And he's like, I don't remember what they said, but there was a really good exchange back and forth. And eventually she's just like piss off and runs away. But it was really funny. Like drop dead. They're like too late. Like there was a really, there was some pretty there's good tongue in cheek. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Christina Ricci was really good in this. She was fun. Like she, she had some banter with the students too. Yeah, she's never um, not been good. And I think with any other child actor, it probably wouldn't have been as enjoyable. Yeah, she she played well with the adults. I did I did uh, I do agree that everything that Bill Pullman said was a little like slurry. <laughs> <laughs> he was just drunk the whole time. Right. Um All right. So yeah, so pretty solid, pretty solid movie. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel it was a waste of time. It was definitely good to watch a Halloween. Like we we like to watch a certain set of movies like every um christmas like we know which ones we're gonna watch like i think i can see myself watching this as one of the halloween movies adding it to the rotation yeah it was pretty good it was fun like <laughs> it's like an it's like an hour and a half it went by pretty quick and yeah. i don't feel like there was a ton of wasted space in it or wasted time it's a good movie so yeah, what fun. are we watching for the next one well we're gonna do hocus pocus uh we're gonna get that guest slated we've got a couple weeks to do that now so hocus pocus coming up next and yeah that'll yeah. be fun Sweet. Cool. So Katrina, love yes. of my life, yes, where can our listeners find love you? Love of my life. I am all over the internet at Katrina Ossity, especially on my YouTube channel. Nice. And uh, you guys can check out everything that's MDX Pods related at mdxpods.com. We're on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at MDX Pods. And of course, check us out on patreon.com slash MDX Pods. We did just uh, revamp that uh, as of just a couple of days ago. We've got some new rewards on there. So check them out. And for the month of October, um, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So anybody who signs up for Patreon and supports us in October will get some Prince of Dustin's artwork. If you follow us on Instagram, he's been doing character art for every episode of Remake Rewind. 
Um, we're doing four episodes for Halloween in October for Remake Rewind, and he's gonna we're gonna give away all four of those prints to anyone who signs up. We're gonna give away one print with all four characters, so that'll be pretty cool. Check it out, and thank you for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye.